uh, that made you decide to go from horror to horror comedy? That's kind of a leap. Yeah, I just I just wanted the um, I read the script. I found it funny, and I just wanted to really play around with the conventions. I mean, Creep was very much a straightforward horror, and I wanted to do something that was, the, you know, that really twisted all the conventions on its head. So I just took a script with James Moran, the writer, and we just went right. How do we make this more twisted, more twisted, more funny, more funny? And what's the most outrageous thing we can do in the movie at any one point? And you know, you know, culminating maybe shooting a, an airplane out of the sky. I just went, what can I do that's going to be that's going to make this feel fresh? And I think that's kind of how I applied myself to it. And I think that's why I'm most proud of the film. It kind of has a, a lot of energy in it. You know, it really feels that you know a lot of love's gone into it. Yeah, yeah. Was you, were you at all nervous about tackling comedy and horror? Because it's a real it's tricky, a yeah, it's, tricky, no. it's a tricky uh, combo. <laughs> it's a tricky combo because I think what happens is one one side of it. I mean, I think it's easier if you're making it a kind of a spoof. Spoof's funny because you just got to be funny. So when you're trying to create that kind of horror and comedy, uh, American Werewolf in London, Evil Dead Two, you need to have. And I think what those movies do is they play they play everything straight. So they always are rooted in realism. The characters aren't trying to be funny. The characters are being straight. You know, look at the scene from American Warrior in London. He's there talking to his friend who's decomposing. Every time you come back to him, he's more and more decomposed. You know, but the, the characters are playing it straight. They're playing, you know, they're not trying to be funny. And I think that was the rule that I applied. You know, yes, it has comedy in it, but we play it straight. That's how I approached it. And what attracted you to the uh, role? Uh, I... I love the political part of the script. I love the gore. I love the, uh, the hookers. The hookers really, they really, they just hooked into my heart. I don't know what it was, but I love hookers. And, um, <laughs> what <Don't> else? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, a lot of things about it. And also that it really reminded me of, um, Alien. And it just, uh, the opportunity for me to be able to do some fighting to fight for my life is probably going to come up very rarely. And I love English. Uh, this is going on and on. I love English films and English actors and crews. Not to think I've made an English film. It's like, rem like Remains of the Day. Or I something. know. To me, to me, it's an English <laughs> film. So, yeah. so, you enjoy, so you enjoy kicking ass. I really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like getting messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind of. Uh, early, but I mean, would there ever be a possibility for Severance 2? Well, I've already kind of had the whole thing where it's out of my head, so, you know, the film's done really well in England, fingers crossed it does well here, then yes, and it's actually, it's, I want to tell everyone the idea, but I can't, because the way, because it all depends on one of the biggest jokes in the movie, but put it this way, Laura will be doing some synchronized swimming in it. <laughs> if if she's in it, of course, because I might be able to, you know, <laughs> might recast. Her, so you know I have I mean? mixed feelings about it doing well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> more hookers. I'm yeah. Well, there's going to be more hookers, and there's going to be some synchronized swimming. Can there be enough hookers? I mean, it's, it's going to be like a Busby Barkley musical. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, kind of. Can I synchronize swim with hookers? Yeah, of course <laughs> you can. Yeah, of course. <laughs> God, yeah. You, agree? you certainly are now. We could arrange that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a, there's a pool here. Yeah, I think there is. <laughs> you can be doing it in the lunch. How did you get involved with Magnolia? It seems like a, a sort of odd... Yeah, no, well, those guys, if you look at the Magnolia's films that they're doing, they're kind of really kind of, I think, they're really kind of cool movies they pick up, cool, odd little movies. And I think uh, they came, saw the movie in Cannes last year, loved it, and it was a, Cannes was a sort of a dream, really, because it was everyone that was going to see the screenings, all the buyers were all really liking the movie. And, and I just, you know, and they, they picked it up, and then we met afterwards, and we just felt we were just like this. We, we kind of like the same sort of stuff. They're good kind of indie boys, do you know what I mean? They love their horror. They did The Host as well, so... Yeah, so, you know, and they also did um, Jesus Camp. Which is a great movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a freaky movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're kind of into horror, you Terrifying know. Terrifying as it comes, yeah. Yes, it is. Um, uh, why, why did you cut the uh, talking deer scene? What was it? Did you see the thing in it? I, I have the region to do that. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend, a very good friend of mine, said to me, you don't want to cut that scene, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, the, 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 what you see on the Region 2 DVD is not um, how it will look, how it would have looked. The, the character, Danny Dyer's character, takes a mushroom, hallucinates, goes off, and, and, and you think he's going to be killed in the uh, woods, and he comes across a talking deer. Um, the reason we took it out was because I felt the movie was being pushed too far towards a kind of drug movie, too far towards kind of, you know, fear and loathing and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, when I look at it now, I don't even like the scene, but it was right the way up to the last minute. I was kind of, you know, and I think that the, ultimately, if, if we'd have taken that trajectory and sent him off on that random little trip, the movie would have felt less like a, a, um, a kind of ensemble, mm -hmm. and it would have felt more like, you know, we're just following this one character. So I wanted to keep it like that, yeah. And last question, uh, what's next for you? Uh, the next thing I'm doing is a movie called Triangle, which is a, uh, a, a kind of bigger budget uh, psychological uh, horror movie that takes place on an ocean liner and plays with time and is freaky and, yeah, it get, means I get to start the movie off with the, the line, exterior Barbados day, which is, <laughs> so I get to, you know, I get to show off my physique, <laughs> get my, take my girdle off, my swimming costume, my swimsuit, um, yeah, and Laura? <laughs> I'm under contract with ABC. <laughs> I love I have to say that. I'm under contract with ABC too. <laughs>